Mike Beckman Show. Well, for a couple of weeks leading up to Arts, Beats, and Eats, all the talk, or a lot of the talk, was about the lifting of the ban the city commission in Royal Oak tried to place on weapons being carried openly at the big festival that was held over the weekend. Finally, after a lot of pressure to conform to state law, the city commission struck down the gun ban, and uh, there was a big hue and cry. You remember Brooks Patterson was, uh, was among those who thought the gun ban was a good idea. But as it turned out, people were allowed to carry holstered weapons at Arts, Beats, and Eats. And uh, what was the result? Was there a drop in participation among uh, uh, festival goers? No, quite the opposite. They had a record turnout, and there were no incidents reported. And you wonder if the folks from Open Carry are taking some of the credit for that. Let's check right now. Jan Jay is with Michigan Open Carry Incorporated. And on the other end of our line this morning, hello, Jan. It's a pleasure, Frank. Nice of you to join us. What did you make of the uh, turnout at Arts, Beats, and Eats and the fact that really they uh, they had an incident-free weekend? Well, I, I think that it was a victory for all of the citizens that are pro-firearms and any of the persons that wanted to go to the event and just have a good time. Do you believe that, that the discussion over open carry and the fact that it was eventually allowed, as it is under state law, had an impact on the number of people who showed one way or the other? Well, I don't think it had a big effect on whether they showed or not. I think it had a big effect on the amount of media publicity that went out and the advertising that they got for Arts, Beats, and Eats. Uh, basically, and you have to remember, Frank, and I want to clarify this, they weren't just against open carry of firearms. They were against anyone that was a concealed carry, any legal person that was carrying a firearm, either concealed or open, and they were anti-firearm, period. So, and, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, that, that was the basic problem in the preface. They were notified nine months in advance that there was a problem. In the previous event, which was held in Pontiac for years, there's never been a clause. For some reason, all of a sudden, this became an important issue to the uh, producers, manufacturers, and, and the persons that were in charge. Um, I felt that it was a grave injustice, and I think that, our, that any citizen that stepped up to the plate that went to address the city council at any time during citizen's time, uh, peacefully, did a fantastic job of voicing exactly what the Constitution said you have a right to do to, uh, to address a uh, government body that may be doing an injustice. Jan, in the end, was this a win-win for everybody, though? I think this was a win-win. I want to make sure, and I'm hoping, Mr. Beckman, that you and your audience will make sure that the charities that were allegedly there, and I'm hoping that there were charities to receive that money, received that funding, and it didn't go by the wayside of administrative fees and costs, and they're only going to see pennies. Rather, if you had record turnouts, as they've said, Mr. Beckman, and if they've had record turnouts and they've had record crowds, and twice they said they had to stop the admittance because there was no more room for the people to be there, I'm hoping that those charities do banner years of some wonderful work for people that need help. Well, we all we all do. Let's uh, let's face it. Uh, Long term, what does it do for for your cause and your organization? Well, what we're hoping is that it will open the eyes of every citizen that is a legal carrying of a firearm or a person. And, and let's let's be very frank. Uh, and I apologize for the pun about Frank Beckman and being frank. But anyway, let, let us let us be truthful on the fact that the issue really stems from everyone should be truthful with everyone, and you can't just because you have a phobia about something immediately ban it because that's not how America was formed, you know. And this this has to go on. And I'm hoping that next year. They make more money for more charities. You know, uh, it, it just can't be cycling out one group of people. Where does it stop if you just cycle out one group of people? You can only wear red T-shirts. You can only wear blue socks. It, it has to stop somewhere. It just has to be an open community. Do you think this helped your cause, uh, this, this whole controversy, and the fact that uh, in the end it was much ado about nothing? Well, I think what's going to happen is you're going to have two folds. And the first fold is is everybody that says we're going to contact our legislators, we're going to have a constitutional convention, we're going to put a stop to this. It may awake more people to go out and actually vote. Those people have a right to vote that way. But I think more people that attended the Arts, Beats, and Eats may say really didn't seem to make any difference. It seemed to be a pretty good thing. There were no crimes against persons. There were no pickpockets. There were no uh, gangs of warfare that were going on. There were no accidental discharges of firearms. I guess the biggest question is how many persons were inebriated that left that party or uh, festival, and did they hurt anyone with an automobile while they were intoxicated? 
I, I, obviously, obviously I, a firearm didn't do it. I, I know. I get your point on that, but uh, uh, that's uh, that that's another issue entirely uh, far beyond this. But uh, this was interesting because uh, what what made this issue so important was was number one, we had a local municipality that was that was bucking state law here. That was one, and and federal law as well, uh, for that matter, and. Eventually, it was it was brought to light, and they changed under pressure. Well, and again, had it not been, and again, as as I said, that the media made Arts Beats and Eats a festival that was successful. If it had not been for the media, do you really think? And and your, I would ask this of your audience: Do you really think that they would have changed it, or they would have just put up a sign and started turning people away if the media wasn't covering it? I don't know. What do you think they would have done? I think they would have just continued to do it, and people would have been detained. They would have been their rights would have been violated, and the city may or may not have had to pay out large sums of money for something that we jumped. We, our organization was very clear cut, and it was not an organizational function that our organization was doing. Everybody belongs to different groups. We have members from our group that were the ones that addressed it. It was never something that was put on a um, an agenda for the board. It was nothing that was ever taken in action by the the uh, 200 member plus that we have. This was just discussed by people that are very competent that choose to live in that community, that address the board and use our resources to confirm what we already knew. And they had to be victorious because of the fact that the law is pretty clear. There are gray areas in the law, but this is pretty clear cut. This is in the Constitution of the state of Michigan and in the United States Constitution. Yeah, and like the ordinance that they passed had no real set purpose other than to deny citizens their legal right to carry a firearm. Mm-hmm. Well, in, in the end, like I said, I think, uh, I think everybody won on this one. Well, I'm hoping, and again, Mr. Beckman and your audience, make sure that all that charity money went to charities and didn't go to other sources. That's my only. That's the win I think that we did for the citizens of the state of Michigan and Royal Oak and Oakland County. And I'm greatly disappointed with Mr. Patterson's uh, statement, um, where he had made the, the statement that they should join the military because of the fact that if Mr. Patterson had looked, a good portion of our members are disabled veterans that served and received their disabilities while in combat. And we don't brag about that. People don't do that. You just brag about the fact that we're knowledgeable, and you address it with facts, not with innuendos and crude statements. All right, Jan, thanks for being with us this morning. It's a pleasure. I wish you the very best, and God bless your entire audience. Thank you, and the same to you.